Alrighty then, we ready to uh, get started? Well. Alrighty. No time like the present. Like the now. Well, except for the past, but... Oh well. That, that yeah. thing is dead. Kinda missed that one. <laughs> you killed it. You monster. Mm-hmm. We are first. All right. Uh, okay. Does that sound like a dead horse? Or a dying horse? I don't think dead horses make noise. <laughs> as far as I know. I'm being incredibly evil today. Not evil, awful. Sorry. <laughs> There's kind of a big difference. <laughs> Alrighty. In three, two, one. Hello and welcome back to the Turbo Newscast for Jan. This is why I don't put the date anywhere but the first part. Because I will fuck it up. <laughs> I was gonna get the number of the day right. And then I said fucking January. Next I'm gonna find out that you haven't recorded any of this. Nah, I, I am recording it. <laughs> Don't worry. I made sure of that. Uh, Alright, take two. And three. We're two, so good at this. One. Hello and welcome back to the Turbo Newscast. It's part three. Oh, section one. You know, you're used to it by now if you're... A regular watcher of the show. This is the part where we pull all the stories out of our ass. Right out of the bottoms. Yep. So if I ever sound intelligent or well read or anything about anything in this part. You are probably just quoting I'm lying. the article. Yes, I'm either lying or reading verbatim from the article. And if I'm reading verbatim, you can usually tell because I'm scrolling the window. <laughs> exactly. And yes, that is actually kind of... I did kind of just give that away. If I'm scrolling the window, chances are most of what I'm saying is just straight out of the article. Or paraphrased. Good to know. Not like you didn't know that before, but just confirming that for you. I'm not that original. <laughs> um, Alright. So, well... We're going to start out... With, well, Something thoughts. Something I figured would have already been established. Yeah. You'd think that we'd already have something like this. You would think, well, you think, 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 that, uh, it, that, no, I can't think anymore. <laughs> you got so focused on article. the think, think, think part that you've missed everything else. <laughs> I obviously can't think anymore, so obviously we're done with this article, because I'm... Well, that's my train of thought. Uh, well... Apparently this, this movie is not my head. A, ter a team of Japanese researchers have, uh... have captured, for the first time, a movie which shows how thoughts form in the brain of a zebrafish. <laughs> now, yes, uh, to start out with, it is only a zebrafish, and since it is a zebrafish, they don't really have all that many... Thoughts, more like just um, food now. But it's still a thought forming in a brain. To be fair, that's all most people think about. Most men. <laughs> <laughs> food, tits, and sleep. And sleep. <laughs> This is why you cannot put me in the same category, Cloud. <laughs> I feel abused. I said most men. Alright, I gave it to you there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, in case you're wondering, they used a uh, super sensitive fluorescent probe detecting neuron activity that let us see neurons glow when they're active. Um, and the cascade of light you see in the video which I'm not going to show you. You can go watch it. The story list is linked every week in the video's comments. Just go check it out. It's kind of it's kind of cool, not going to lie. Well, I am, but... Unless you lie. Yeah. 
But yeah, it's it's kind it's an awesome start because now the uh, researchers from Japan's National Institute of Genetics are now trying to work out how to use the technique in other creatures so we could get a uh, better insight into how our brains actually work. We just find out that our brains don't work and we're just puppets. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, not going to lie. Yeah. That one I'm actually not going to lie about. Puppets of the Parasite. All right, and then next up, we've got nanoparticles. And no matter yeah. what, if an article mentions nanoparticles, it automatically sounds about three times more sciency. Especially when it's in this kind of text, like, my gosh, can you block that text more, please? Yeah, I know. Look at how fucking tiny this text is. <laughs> I feel like I'm walking into a wall of text here. I have to zoom it in to 125 to even get it almost readable for me. I can't even imagine how it looks to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. By um, cloaking nanoparticles in the membranes of white blood cells, scientists at the Methodist Hospital Research Institute may have found a way to prevent the body from recognizing and destroying them before they deliver the drugs. Um, they call them leuko-like vectors. Um, and their goal was to make a particle that um, is camouflaged within our bodies and escapes the surveillance of the immune system so it can reach its target undiscovered. Um, you just gotta send in solid snake. Basically, it can deliver different uh, types of drugs to specific cell types, so... For example, chemotherapy to cancer cells. But um, for a normal nanoparticle to give all the benefits um, that they offer, they have to evade the body's normal immune system because while the immune system still recognizes them as an evader, or an invader, there we go, evader, difference, um, as an invader, so it tries to destroy the nanoparticles, which are just trying to be helpful. So they were trying to disguise the nanoparticles so that the body wouldn't confuse them Haven't for bad guys. Haven't you seen every science fiction horror movie ever? The nanoparticles are always the bad guys. They eat things and turn things into other things. Well, yeah, but I did also see that one episode of the Magic School Bus where they turned into nanoparticles. So all is well. Yeah. <laughs> I also saw the one where they went to Pluto and the guy froze to death, but that's okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That one was a thing too. Because <laughs> he didn't actually die for some reason. No one ever dies. It's the freaking magic school bus. Miss Frizzle was too awesome for you anyone to die, die around her. On Pluto. I don't give a damn if it's magic school bus or not. <laughs> Doctor Who hasn't been there. It's not possible. Uh why are we talking about that again? Fuck the final. You brought it up. <laughs> it's that. It's that. It's that thing power. I was it's trying to. It. I was trying to give my science for non scientists bit, and then you came up with the uh, connection between. Yeah, you came up with the nanoparticles are always bad guys. When I said bad, when I said the immune system shouldn't recognize the. Uh, well, it's true. Yeah. That's true. I'm just most I'm not times. lying. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on. Researchers have unveiled their first artificial enzyme created by evolution in a test tube. Yeah. Um. Be proven it, man. In double plan. At, at the. At the University of Minnesota, in Burkhard Selig's lab, there's a biochemical structure that possibly could resemble what enzymes looked like billions of years ago when life began to evolve on Earth, long before they became enzyme or ingredients for new and improved products like us and detergents and food. Um, How did they do that? Well, he used directed evolution. 
um, what exactly that is. Doesn't that take a long time? I feel like that would take a long time. Uh, well, yeah, I imagine it would. I assume it's, a, I assume it's, I assume it's like evolution on steroids. I would assume so as well. Um, rational yeah. enzyme design relies I, I on preconceived notions of what an, a new enzyme should look like and how it should function. In contrast, directed evolution involves producing a large quantity of candidate proteins and screening several generations to produce one with the desired function. With this approach, the outcome isn't limited by current knowledge of enzyme structure. So pretty much, it's normal evolution. But... I see. I think I get it. I think I get it now. Yeah, it's natural selection. It's a little confusing. It's unnatural selection. There we go. Needless to say, I'm not a biochemist. No, so neither really am I. Know. But, uh... I'm just guessing off of the gist that they've given here. <laughs> I like how we keep adding bio into things. It's awesome. Like, there's biophysics and biochemistry and biopolitics. It's amazing. There is biopolitics now. You know, at first I was gonna ask, what the fuck would biopolitics be? And then I realized what biopolitics would be. And I realized that I do not want biopolitics to be a thing. Why not? It just doesn't seem right. To add biology into politics? To have politics of biology. So then we were on club. Oh. So it's all good. We just incorporate... We try to understand how biology would affect politics. Oh, well then in that case, okay, yeah, it's a good thing. I approve. <laughs> In that case, carry on. We're all good. Okay. Um, so this... Biopsychology? That's amazing. This is kind of awesome. Aren't they all? Yeah, because this... It, it, uh... You're at a loss for words. It, I really am. <laughs> I really just am. They found more life. But it's deep below the Antarctic ice. We're not there yet. God. Spoilers. Thought you were there. No. That's the next one on the list. I was still talking about the artificial enzyme. <laughs> but, well, I guess we're going on to the next one. God! Because you gave me a segue, fool. Ugh. Yes, scientists have indeed found life below uh, the Antarctic ice. Uh, ice. Ice. <laughs> um, they drilled through a half a mile of ice. That's a lot of ice. Ice, ice, baby. More like ice, 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 baby. See, that was that was the second song. I didn't do this before. They're kind of repetitive. Uh huh. It was less a club song and more a plea for help. <laughs> more yes. It was it was Vanilla Ice's Dark Days. Um, yes. On January twenty eighth, a US research team retrieved water from Lake Willans, um which sits eight hundred meters below the ice surface, um, which hosted a surprising bounty of living cells. Now uh, the life they found is not actually like fish or anything, it's just it's cells. But still, it's kind of I awesome. Could, I couldn't live down there. <laughs> no, you couldn't, especially since the uh, the microbes that they did find have been sealed off below the ice for at least 100,000 years. Well, <laughs> we aren't finding people down there anytime soon. No. 
There's no secret organization down there of people that have sealed themselves beneath the ice. That'd be great if there were. It's just people living under the ice. Mm -hmm. so it's well, it'd probably be, it'd probably be more like what was that one movie about the the people in the Antarctic and the they have the, there's the the, the thing alien. the thing that's it yes. <laughs> Thank you, Gear, for that. <laughs> just a gear. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. The thing. That's would be more likely. What were we talking about again? Um fuck if I know. You went out to a uh entirely strange tangent. What one of those tangents that I do. You know, I have to wonder how many uh ice related puns they toss at each other on the uh in Antarctica. They probably, they probably they get like the new guy in there who just starts doing a whole bunch of ice puns and they just punch him. In the face. <laughs> They're like, "God, please make it." <laughs> you must be new around here. Ice to meet you. Uh, yeah, you're new around here. <sighs> everyone is like. <laughs> So, there's your turbo tip for the night. If you happen to go to Antarctica, do not use ice puns. No ice puns. They have heard them all. You're not Arnold Schwarzenegger. No. Uh, not Arnold nor are you Vanilla Ice. Although, if you are, uh, go ahead. Uh, really, you kind of, you kind of have the right. Is he still alive? Which one? Vanilla Ice. Probably. I haven't heard anything. He's kind of gone, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, he doesn't matter anymore, so he... he's irrelevant. Uh huh. Hey, we're still relevant, as long as we're doing this. We're relevant? Yes. Yes, Vanilla Ice is still alive. Okay. He's 45. I just assumed. I didn't assume anything, actually. Never mind. <laughs> Never yeah, assume. Makes an ass out of you and me. Exactly. What's next? Um, well... Calm your tits, first. Second off... <laughs> um, <What>? well... <laughs> Oop. We've found... Richard the... Third? Third. Yeah, Richard the Third. We found his skull. Wasn't he under the some kind of parking lot? Yes. <laughs> I heard about this because my mom. Yep. He found... Oh, or he found... Yes. We... It was originally, at least, um, they believe it to be, um, where he was buried after his death at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485. Um, mm -hmm. They believe... They on his back. Yeah, believe they they believe it was a well, no, I think they know it was a church that was demolished for a parking, parking lot. lot. And now it, it's an excavation site. And the parking lot owners like fuck. <laughs> well, shit, not going to get that not going to get any uh money off of that parking space anymore. Why would you got to die and bury him there? <laughs> Um, but, yeah, the skeleton did show evidence of what was believed to be scoliosis and battle trauma, um, which do indicate that it was, in fact, Richard yeah. III. He's the one that made his nephews mysteriously disappear. <laughs> and they found their bodies. Nephews? What nephews? Exactly. <laughs> Conveniently killed them all, uh -huh. probably. Or maybe it was the butler. Alright, but yeah, we just a little bit there. It's usually I just... I know so much more than everyone, because my mom was uh -huh. like, hey, I found this great story online. It's the only news she's read in years. <laughs> yeah, we usually have just little bits in this section, because I don't like talking out my ass too much. But back to it. Yep, back to it. 
It's New Gingrich time. Oh, wait, was that Mars? A what? He's the one that's in the moon base. Wasn't he the moon base guy? I don't remember. New Gingrich? I'm pretty sure he was. He was the moon base guy. The uh, European Space Agency, ignoring you, <laughs> has yes. unveiled blueprints for mankind's first habitable lunar base. By the way, entirely off topic, habitable is a very bouncy word to say. Okay, he was Mars, fine then. Um, but yes, the uh, lunar base will be built by robots almost entirely out of moon soil to quote them. Um, and it'll be built using state-of-the-art 3D printing technology to transform raw lunar soil into livable domes. So Isn't in... That just like the greatest thing ever? So in we other words... Mm -hmm. In other words, we've finally found... We finally have blueprints for phase one of Aperture Science. You know, it's going to be really awesome when they start making, like, Aperture Science replica facilities out of, with 3D printers. That's be the greatest thing ever. Uh-huh. I want to test chambers, man. Experts say it could even be ready for humans to move in within the next 40 years. <laughs> To the moon. I like Bad Thoughts' uh, opinion. It'll be a while before they get Google Fiber up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How does internet even work there? Satellite. Satellite, that's right. Mm -hmm. Does that take a while, though? Fuck yeah. You, know, like, you can't play... like... an MMO on there because you'd have a ping of, like, 20,000. Longer, I don't know. Anyways. I'm, I'm lost. Alright, well, we're gonna go to uh, a couple also, miscellaneous. What? 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 What websites have digital clocks anymore? I thought that was like a fad that died in the mid 2000s. Holy crap, this. Wow, this website has a digital clock. What the fuck? I thought those died in like the mid 2000s. I thought they did too. That was like a fad. <laughs> Apparently not. Um, alright. Anyways, we've got two miscellaneous stories this week, and both of which I actually meant to delete, but then I, uh, didn't because I found out we only had, we would only have six stories. So, two miscellaneous bizarre stories. Good segue into section two, though. Kitty. To start out with, yes, indeed, Kitty. 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 Monopoly, well, Hasbro, has, uh, after a month-long vote from fans, Hasbro has decided, or has announced, that they will retire the iron, you know, the piece that no one used, um, from the pieces that you could use, and will instead replace it with a cat, with a little Monopoly collar. Look you at realize that. that's that's gonna end the game right there because then you have to pick between uh -huh. the cat and all the other pieces. Uh huh. It's over. That's, I mean, whoever gets the cat wins the game regardless. Pretty much. Of how it goes. So now you can own your monopolies in style. Yes. In case you were wondering, um, Hasbro says the boot. Iron and Wheelbarrow were the uh, three tokens tied for last place um, for the most used. G, boot, iron, and wheelbarrow. I wonder why. I didn't even know the wheelbarrow was a piece. I forgot about that until you said it. Uh-huh. Uh, just give us... I Just make animals. People like animals. Well, fans were presented with five replacement token options. 
a helicopter, a diamond ring, a robot, a guitar, and a cat. Dude, just replace all the old, the other ones and update the game. Don't replace the thimble. Because I liked using the thimble as a little hat for all of my other pieces. And I'm not the only one who did it either. That's the only thing you do with the thimble. You use it as a fez for the puppy. Yeah, but <laughs> you realize that this loses the point of being a piece then. It looks adorable. I just put, just tell him to put the thimble on the puppy to start with. Just give the puppy a fez. Yes. <laughs> and then we're all good, right? I guess. <laughs> Just go to jail, Cliff. <laughs> Can I pass go? go? Oh. Like Two hundred dollars. Just, just go to jail. Uh. And roll the dice. All right. Well, one last story, and it's another quickie. Women in Paris are, in fact, finally allowed to wear trousers. Yay. Yes, that's right. On January 31st, um, France's Minister of Women's Rights made it officially impossible to arrest a woman for wearing trousers in Paris. This is a law? Yeah. Holy balls. What the, what the heck's wrong with you, Paris? <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with you, Paris? That's my question. <laughs> Well, it was still in place because officials said that the unenforced rule, and yeah, it wasn't enforced because, well, come on, really. It wasn't a priority, and, well, it was kind of part of French legal archaeology. Yeah, but you still could get arrested for wearing trousers. Not if you were holding a bicycle handlebar or the reins of a horse. Because How the law was amended in... Well... How are you holding the reins of a horse, Cliff? Well, just carry around a bicycle handlebar. Just You don't even need the rest of the bike. You just hold the handlebar. Just, like, over your shoulder. Like, just... no. Hey, guys, look, I'm buying a bicycle handlebar. I am good. <laughs> yeah, see these pants? See this handlebar? I'm good. <laughs> Just pull out of your backpack. I might be doing a myriad of other illegal things, but at least you can't arrest me for wearing like pants. They're coming after you, and you just like unzip your backpack and pull out a bicycle handle. Be like, no, stop! I'm safe. <laughs> yeah, well, you weren't before, so well, we got you. We got we, we got we for you to drop it. <laughs> they just follow you around the rest of the day. All right. Well, we'll be back in a bit. With uh, section two. Yay. We'll see you then.